Hey guys, what's up? Vaughn here. I want to tell you a little about last night's big movie. Sharknado 2, the second one, premiered on the Sci-Fi Channel. Now, the thing about the first one is it didn't really get popular until I think it was Patton Oswalt said on Twitter a few jokes about, hey, what are they playing over here on Sci-Fi? Sharknado, what's next? I mean, who knows? Like, this is ridiculous kind of stuff. Then it kind of caught some steam because this was a, a little thing they did with the Asylum, who has been churning out on a regular basis garbage for Sci-Fi Originals. Anyhow, with the second one, I feel like this time around they know better what kind of movie they're making. It, it doesn't masquerade as anything great, though I gotta say Ian Ziering definitely plays it straight enough that like he thinks he's Tom Cruise. Like I kind of have to commend him here. But uh, anyhow, with the first Sharknado, it's god damn it, do I have a bee following me? It's only like the last 30 minutes of the broadcast that's worth watching. It's pretty dull up to that point. This one's more action-packed from the onset. So, returning from the first movie, Ian Ziering and Tara Reid, they play Finn and April, respectively. They're on a 747, headed to New York City to see Finn's sister, not that that even matters just a vice to get them to New York City. She's written a book, uh, How to Survive a Sharknado. It's like the zombie survival guide. And while I'm watching that, I'm like, hey, they should have that book available. They do. I don't know shit about it, but I think that's fairly interesting, isn't it? So, the plane's in some storms. Finn looks out on the wing sees a shark hit it, no one else believes him, doing a little bit of that Captain Kirk Twilight Zone action. Then they're in a full-on Sharknado. The plane is getting hit, ravaged by sharks. People are getting killed. First of our celebrity cameos, Kelly Osborne is a stewardess. She gets killed, you know, head bitten by a shark. It's pretty much the way a lot of people go down. Will Wheaton is killed before he can say anything. That's the best way to use Will Wheaton. On the plane, Captain and Co-Pilot are taken out. Ian Ziering then has to uh, try to land the plane at the same time Tara Reed's dealing with sharks. The Marshal on the flight hands her a gun. She tries to shoot a shark that's coming in at her. I don't know how they can keep track of which ones are coming their direction, but she's shooting at it and it bites her hand off. This is key later for whatever reason. So once we've established that she's lost a hand, they safely land, head to the hospital where Dr. Billy Ray Cyrus is there to operate. Yes, a lot of celebrity cameos, a lot of product placement. You know, it's like the first thing we see in the movie is like Kelly Osborne reaching for like a Coors Light on the plane. And we do have a few close-ups of stuff like that. So anyways, they get, get down to New York City. I guess Finn's sister married Sugar Ray's Mark McGrath. And then they have like, I don't know, so they, they used to be bros, now they put the hoe before the bro, and you know how that goes, right? So then um, he, he meets up with him over at this baseball park where it's City Field where the Mets play. A Sharknado's coming. They have like two converging Sharknados. They're going to form an EF5 Sharknado. Al Roker. I, my favorite bit in the whole thing was Al Roker and Matt Lauer. Because Al Roker is on the Sharknado bandwagon. Matt Lauer wants to say anything else. This shark storm. This supercell. I mean, whatever. By the end of it, 
Al Roker finally gets Matt Lauer to, to drop the Sharknado and he's got this like glee like, yes, I urged you. You accepted the Sharknado vernacular. And uh, City Field's getting hit by a Sharknado. The place looks pretty clean. I mean, it, it did make too much sense. I mean, like, if you would have stayed there, you would have been fine. Anyhow, uh, while they're there waiting to get some food or something, uh, one of the greats of the Mets, I guess. Goddamn, I forgot the actor's name, but I know he's like best friends of George Clooney. He's there, gives a little bit of speech about his past, hits a shark out of the ballpark, something like that. It pulls the big apple up like he hit a home run. Okay, I'm coming up on some uh, people walking a kid, so I'm turning around. So anyhow, um, they leave the field after, you know, several people die from a Sharknado, head to the subway, subway gets flooded, shark attack. Uh, in the subway, we have Subway's own Jared there for product placement. And the way it's like slammed into here, it's it's so, so ham-fisted and unnatural, the product placement cameos. We also have a cameo from Shark Tank's Damon John. At first I thought it was going to be brief, but eventually he gets killed by the Statue of Liberty trying to reach back for his suitcase full of bills. Yeah, subtle. Statue of Liberty's head comes off, starts rolling towards Finn's sister, and this group is trying to get away. Slowly, you know, anybody not directly related to Finn is going to be in great danger and die eventually, even if they were kind of cool. Hell, Judd Hirsch was a taxi driver, and I think the guy who flew the plane at the beginning flew the plane in airplane. So, everybody's like doing a little bit on what they're known for. And you have, god damn, I'm not watching where I'm going. Yeah, you have Judd Hirsch gets killed, like all these bodies stacking up. I think it's a fair bit bloodier than the last one. There's a good deal of gaffes, like Tara Reed shows up on the scene. She is so horrible, by the way. Her, her acting is straight up unconvincing unenergetic, uninspired, medicated. I guess she could, you know, that doesn't make too much of a stretch if she said she was high while doing this. I mean, she was on some painkillers because she had her hand dubbed. So, she shows up with a fire truck on a close-up of the name of it. I, I don't know why they had to insert this shot, but they had like a Chevy... Silverado with a camper on it and it was used by the fire department but it's not the same thing as a fire engine and it's very noticeable and for some reason I'm the one who caught this like explain that Twitter they decide the best way to take down the stuff is to go to the top of the Empire State Building try to like freeze out the the storm like I don't know what the, the plan was but there's an explosion Finn gets launched in the air. You know, I'm, I'm not even talking about all the characters because they don't matter because they die. Finn goes flying, chainsaws his way through a shark, then gets a hold of, and this is completely impossible by the way because it would have cut him up so bad. Gets a hold of some chains, wrangles a shark, whoosh, rides the shark down onto the top of the same building that just blew up on top of the lightning rod spear at top of Empire State Building, I believe it is. Or whichever building's got it. I mean, hell, I don't know New York. I don't give a shit about them. They don't care about Kansas. I don't have to care about NYC. You said it. Or rather, I did. You heard it. So, yeah, he gets that done wrangles it over to the needle and slides down to safety because 
he, he pretty much shish kebab the shark. And that, that was all right. I mean, like, where do you go after a guy jumps through a shark and then crawls out with the girlfriend in the last movie? They had to go over the top some more. They knew, they knew full well what kind of movie they were making. So, he's fine. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that Nubby Tara Reed showed back up with a buzz saw attached to her arm. Not as cool as a chainsaw, and yeah, we have seen that before. And it was about 30 years ago. Anyhow, what did I think of it? This is kind of like a two out of four star movie. Frankly, I don't like, unless it's particularly excellent, I don't actually rate made for TV movies. I don't feel that they're competing in the same league. It's like making a minor league team play against the Yankees any year, the Yankees that is. It's just not the same scenario. I think that they realized what they needed to do here. It was to have it more fun throughout. And I feel like they accomplished that. Like this was not boring in the sense that the first hour at least of Sharknado was. Yeah, let me know what you think in your comments below. Peace.